I want to talk about one of the most interesting things that I run into as an algebra teacher, which is all of a sudden, eighth grade, ninth grade algebra, you start to introduce new kinds of operations and new kinds of equations. For example, you might introduce exponential equations. These are equations where the missing part is the exponent itself. This can be kind of confusing for students at first because they're not quite sure how to recover that missing information. In the past, when we've dealt with exponents, like squaring things, we usually do things like take a square root or at least some kind of root. But in this case, precisely because the missing piece of information is the exponent, we don't know what kind of root to take. Do I take a square root? Do I take a cube root? What do I do? But this video is not precisely about what do you do in that situation. This video is about why is it that this happens at all? It's not hard to undo addition, right? We just do subtraction. It's not hard to undo multiplication. We just do division. Why is it hard to undo exponentiation? So the way I want to think about this is going to use the triangle of power that I first ran into watching Grant Sanderson's videos, Grant Sanderson of the three brown, one blue YouTube channel. And I'm going to extend his triangle. His triangle is specifically for exponentiation, but give me a second. I'm going to use it with some addition and then some multiplication first. Let's say that we know two plus three is five. We can state this relationship in three different ways. We sometimes call this a fact family when we're first learning like addition and subtraction facts. We can say that two plus three is equal to five, in which case we're taking each of these two corners of the triangle and we're generating the third corner by, of course, just adding the two numbers together. If we didn't know one of the corners of the triangle, if we didn't know the three, for example, we could still generate that information by using subtraction instead. So this is one of the other facts that's a part of our fact family. We can say that 5 minus 2 is 3, and in that way we could recover this missing corner. Similarly, if we didn't know this bottom left corner of the triangle, we could say that 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, and in that way we could recover that other corner. It's in this sense that we mean addition and subtraction are inverses of each other. Whatever we do in addition, we can undo with subtraction. You'll notice that the same operation, subtraction, was able to invert the addition regardless of which corner I was missing. The reason for this, of course, has to do with the fact that addition is is commutative. Whether I want to write 2 plus 3 equals 5 or 3 plus 2 equals 5, it works either way, and therefore either subtraction that I perform can recover the other add end or difference or whichever one of the words that you want to use that describes that. So whether it's 2 plus some blank that I don't know that makes 5 or some blank plus 3 that I don't know that makes 5, either way subtraction gets me that missing blank. You'll note that multiplication and division work precisely the same way. If I know any two of these corners for a multiplication fact, I can always recover the third corner. Two times three obviously gets me that product of six, but if I were missing either the two or the three, I could divide to recover the other one. And again, it makes no difference which one it is that I'm searching for. Division gets me there either way, precisely because multiplication is commutative exactly like addition was commutative. But you'll note that if we want to do something like exponents or powers, this relationship breaks down. Let's say that we want to represent 2 to the third power equals 8, and we're going to use this same kind of triangle. So we're going to place the 8 at this bottom right corner, and again it represents the value of raising 2 to the third power. Right now, if I were missing one of the other corners though, one of the original corners, I might think, oh, I need to undo that exponentiation precisely the same way that I undid multiplication with division, or that I undid addition with subtraction. But all of a sudden with exponentiation, there's a little wrench thrown into the works. If the thing that I don't know is the base of the exponent, so let's call it x for a second. If I know some x to the third power equals eight, I need to undo that power of three using something called a root, specifically in this case, a third root or a cube root. That is, if it's the exponent that I know, but not the base, I'm going to undo exponentiation with a root. And of course, that works fine here. It is true that in this case, x is the cube root of eight or two, and so we can recover the base using that root. But if, on the other hand, it was actually the power that I was missing, so I know that 2 raised to some y power is equal to 8, but I don't know what that power is, I don't know what my exponent is, a root doesn't help me. Because 
to take the cube root a moment ago, I needed to know the cube of the cube root. I needed to know that I was raising something to the third power. In this case, raising two to some y power doesn't help me precisely because it's the y that I don't know. I can't take some unknown yth root of eight in order to figure out the very thing that I want, which is the missing exponent. Instead, what I have to do is take a logarithm. So this is where the logarithm gets involved. When it's the exponent that's missing from an exponential equation, a logarithm is the inverse that helps us recover that. And again, that works just fine. Log base two of two ends up canceling in some sense, leaving me with the unknown I'm trying to solve for. On the other side, I have log base two of eight. And if you type that into a calculator, it's certainly true. Log base two of eight is three and we have successfully recovered that top corner of our triangle. But why is it that we needed two different kinds of inverses for this exponential equation when we only needed division to undo multiplication or subtraction to undo addition? The reason is that exponentiation, unlike addition and unlike multiplication, is not a commutative operation. Remember, when I was adding two and three, it made no difference whether I did two plus three equals five or three plus two equals five. Because addition is commutative, the result was the same either way, and so that very same inverse, subtraction, worked regardless of which one I was doing. Similarly, two times three is six, three times two is six, division is gonna be able to undo that multiplicative process for me the same regardless of which of those two original multipliers or factors that I was missing. But exponentiation does not work that way. Two to the third is eight, but if I flip around the base and the exponent there, three squared is not eight. Three squared happens to be nine. And if you choose other numbers, the differences are only gonna get greater from there. In fact, other than trivial cases where the base and the exponent are the same, there's only one case I know of where you can switch the base and the exponent and you get back the same result. I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer to put that down in the comments. The reason we need both logarithms and roots is that they give us back different information and we need different information because exponentiation is not commutative. If the thing we don't know is the base, if we're trying to recover some missing base, that's when we use a root of some kind, square root, cube root, fifth root, whatever. And that root operation is what will give us back the missing piece. But because exponentiation is not commutative, if it's the exponent that's missing instead, I need a different kind of inverse. To recover a missing exponent, I'm not gonna use a root of any kind. Again, I don't know what root I would take precisely because I don't know the exponent. I'm going to use a logarithm. But armed with a logarithm, we will be able to recover that missing power. And so even though it's not the same operation, it's still something that we can do. We will be able to recover that lost information.